Because when Connor told me that Joe Biden came out as bisexual <laughs> the other day, and it just like for no reason lied to me. She goes, oh. <laughs> oh good <laughs> like, that's awesome like i was happy for him yeah obviously i mean he just photo dumped so it wasn't like he's clearly is photo dumping a bisexual trait no it's no okay i'm just saying like he's clearly i'm, I'm really i'm gonna dig myself yeah i'll, into, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and change the hole. subject so that we can move on I'll i mean he's you. liberal he's a liberal king <laughs> There was something I was going to tell you. Oh, well, I, I was going to ask. Was. You just said before we started rolling that <clears throat> you're glad you didn't eat. Yeah. Because you get tired after you after eat. After I eat. And I do too. And I'm just wondering, do you think we're sick or is that To me, that sounds like an illness that now that you now Because that you I think the back. entire purpose of food is that it's supposed to give you energy. Like yeah. science, what, from a science perspective. No, I eat. So like what time am I going to have to wake up if I have to eat before and so that I can get past my tired so that I can- Five? Because to me, it's like I'm sleep. eating lunch and then I'm immediately I'm in bed napping, napping it off, you know? Um, yeah. I have to get something off my chest. Mm. This is just really, it's, it's, it's embarrassing. What? It's a bad look for what? me. What? I have been sleeping on my couch for the past five nights. Is because it because you have so many clothes in your bed? Because that's where I am too. I washed my sheets and I... Just can't, can't get myself put, yeah. to put my fitted sheet on. I don't blame that's, you. I think that's why people like date. So they have another so they person. they have someone over. else to put the fitted sheet on? I've been sleeping on my couch in my one bedroom apartment because I don't want to put my fitted sheet back on my bed. And that's why I can't wait to sign up for better help. <laughs> <laughs> I, my fitted sheet is just on top of my bed, on top of my duvet. And I'm sleeping on directly on the mattress pad. If that makes sense, if you can picture that. I know, that. I can see that. And yeah. Again, I, I would wanna, recommend it I to you. I want to emphasize the fact that I'm sleeping on my couch. Yeah. I, and I'm, like I brought my blankets yeah, out from my yeah. bed and now it, that is isn't my bedroom now. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Just wishing you a speedy recovery. Thanks. Yeah. Of Thanks. course. So uh, how are you? What'd you do this weekend? Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I kind of had like a bit of a sneaky bender situation mm -hmm. because we had events. I had... You and I went to the roast of Bryce Hall, right? Um, who, by the way, if if you don't know Bryce Hall, Bryce Hall is a big TikToker. Um, he had it was hosted by Jason Nash, right? And Seat Geek and all of these cool, and it was a roast of him, and it was brutal. Like I left the room. I think I yeah I disassociated. I for was the, like, this is like it's actually it, mean. There it was yeah it was pretty mean. I feel like I do generally like kind of mean humor but it still has to be funny like this was just mean yeah for the sake of being mean and I felt so bad for everybody like I felt uncomfortable and bad for everybody that was being roasted like I don't think I was laughing anyways no. I was just we were I mean you you weren't I was just sucking down drinks because it was an open bar which, I, know, I was just it was like scary yeah it was but tough. we met some cool people we did. Oh my God. Wait. <laughs> so <laughs> obviously like the whole crew is there. Tana Mojo, like th the whole like influencer -y crew was yeah. there, but then, um, there were like a couple other people. Olivia Jade was there. She was so nice. Like so the nice. Coolest girl ever. And you know, when like this happens to me all the time where before I leave my house, I look in the mirror and I'm like, you are just so pretty. And you are going to kill it tonight. Like your outfit's on fire. Like you rock girl. And then the second I see one other person, I'm like, I need a bag to put over my head and my body because I shouldn't be allowed out of the house. And Olivia Jade, like sweetest person in the world, but just looking at her, I was like, I should, I shouldn't be in this room. Well, she is so stunning and she was nice, which sucks. Like you kind of always hope that someone like that is like, not so nice so you can at least your yeah. jealousy like is you can't you know, have it all you, can, you can't have she, it all but she, she does she does she She's was really 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 nice. nice and really funny 
And so I like, I had met her when she came in. We have mutual friends, but then mm-hmm. also like the same team. Mm-hmm. And then um, we talked for a second and then I turn around and, and this is just like every other celebrity interaction that both you and I share in the same night. I turn around Brooke, our friend Tristan, and Olivia are at the bar. <laughs> Olivia <laughs> is buying them burgers. I was hungry. Hey, but I don't blame I was just like, that is, she's so, she's super she's nice. She's so ever. nice. She's, Tristan said, I want a burger, but I don't want to spend $35. Yeah. And then Olivia said, I'll get it for you. And then I said, well, I sure am hungry. You don't want to <laughs> miss an opportunity like that. No, but I did order it without the buns because I wanted her to think I'm skinny. So Olivia Jade bought me a burger, hold the bun, and I was eating it as you would a regular burger, just with my hands around yeah. just a patty, mm. shoveling that in my mouth while Bryce Hall is walking by. Olivia Jade is just kind of sitting there with me. She didn't order any food. She didn't. S- sweet angel. Josh Richards was right behind you. Yeah. Then, yeah. Um, anyway, it was a really nice girl. Anyway, we, we ended I just up cannot going, say enough thing, good things about yeah, her. She was amazing. We, we ended up going, I went with her, her friend Natasha. Um, I don't know. And we went to Saddle Ranch. Mm-hmm. And I took myself home at about 9.30. I, I want to do that. Yeah. Um. Well, that was Wednesday. And then <laughs> <laughs> the thing about like accidentally starting the weekend with an event on a Wednesday yeah, is that that's like, scary. then Thursday comes and our friends with more traditional careers are like, all right, the weekend is approaching. Right. It's time to start having fun. And I was like, oh, well, I, well, I need, I'm I exhausted. was out until 2 a.m. yesterday, but like, I, who am I to say no to my friends who have been just working their asses off mm-hmm. all week? I need to go celebrate the end of the week with them. Right. So Thursday, I didn't do that. Thursday, I went to the launch for that um, company sun, Sunroom that I'm, oh, yeah, yeah, that I'm yeah, working with. Yeah. Um, Sunroom, if you're not familiar, is is a great startup for female and non-binary creators to monetize their content. That's cool. And it looked like a fun party. There were stingrays in, like, usually, like, there's, like, in, like, super beautiful homes like that. There, I could see there being, like, a koi pond, but I did notice in your pictures that there were stingrays in, the, in a pond. And there were stingrays in this pond, and this is an indoor pond. Uh, there are stingrays in there because he did remove the sharks for this event. Because he was he was feeling that it was more of a stingray vibe, and I did meet the owner of the home, and obviously my first question is like, w- do you want me to spend the night? Like it's it's a big house. Like, are you lonely? Are you okay? Yeah, you know, you're just looking out for him. And he's like, no, I'm good. And right. I'm like, all right, well, let me know. Like, and then I'm like, you checked everywhere for killers. Like before you go to bed every night, it's a huge house. And he's like, no, I kind of like came to terms with. Being that would be murdered. a really good task rabbit job for you as like to I'll be someone in, to come in and check for killers. Because guess what? I do that. I live in a one bedroom apartment and I check showers right. one, on, and, and under my bed. I have no other storage areas. So. I am shocked to my core every time there's not a killer. Oh. Like I am fully expecting there to be someone every single night. And when there's not, I'm just like, well, guess I got lucky. Tomorrow's the day Tomorrow, that I, I'll meet Another them. day. Yep. I know. But it is nice to wake up feeling gratitude that you weren't murdered right i think my toxic trait is that i think that i could maybe i told you i think i said this before i think i could maybe befriend the killer and i'm like hey listen Mm -hmm. come on Mm -hmm. like you don't need to kill me Mm -hmm. i'm sure i'm not a threat yeah no they're looking for friends that's why they're there yeah do you want to take my stuff take my stuff like what's your motive here unless you just want to kill the kill then Uh uh-huh i'm not I'm not going to stop. Like, I can't. I'm not, I, Look at my upper body. Like, I can't stop a killer. <laughs> I'm dead. Right, right, right. Anyways. Oh, did you see, you also saw Jackass? I did no? see Jackass, yeah. No, I did, I did see Jackass. How was that? I don't know anything about the, I did Google yeah. in prep. I was doing my homework and I YouTube Jackass. And is it just people like smacking each other in the face for two hours? Oh, uh, yeah. But there's a lot of, so we said you. There's no plot. We said Euphoria has a lot of penises in it, right? Jackass invented. Really? Jackass invented. I didn't see that in my research. Screen time for for the the penis and the balls. Mm. It is. I'm not kidding. It's like shout blatant. out to Manscaped. Yeah, it is like insane. Like, cause I saw it in like a big theater. Yeah. I didn't get invited to David Dobrik's um, early release. Next time, maybe. We didn't talk a ton at the roast of Bryce Hall, but he was there. Oh, I didn't see him. Yeah. 
Yes, but, I did. I just lied. I just lied to your face. Okay. I, yeah, I was okay. going to say you were sitting yeah. like maybe 10 right, feet away from right, right, him right. and Natalie. But <clears throat> Jackass is like something I grew up with. So I would, we would go see this thing and like the big screen is like, do not try these things at home. Like you'll get really seriously right. injured. And so naturally we're like, I need a grocery cart and I need someone to push me down a hill into a lake. So is it kind of just like tick, like it's, TikToks all compiled together? To no, make a movie? This, this, this like thing that we grew up with, like, I, and it's crazy that you're so far removed because like these jackass things were like, they were seriously like injuring that they're like getting in the ring with a bull. Like a uh, spoiler alert, like not really because. Is it all the same people doing it or is it like so different? We grew up with these guys. A lot of them were like professional skateboarders, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they're now older. Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O. You don't know any of these no, people? No, I've never heard of these people in my life. Wow. Okay, well, they're like OG legends, but they're still, this is 25 years later, and so they showed like Johnny Knoxville going into the ring with this bull when he was 25, and now he's like 51. Yeah, like, oh. so, so Johnny Knoxville's on the left. Right. Um, Eric Andre was in this newest one. Uh, Tyler, the creator, was in this newest one. Oh. And they were doing stunts? <clears throat> it's like hardly stunts. It's like, They'll they'll be like, hello, my name is Steve-O, and right. this is um, Scorpion Botox. And they'll take a scorpion, and he'll sit there, and they'll hold a scorpion and have it sting him in the mouth. The one I saw was a guy with, like, a, a little cup over his manscaped area? region yeah. area, and um, someone was, th like, swinging a hatchet towards it. That tracks. That one seems yeah. yeah but it's, it, like, there's there's a couple stunts in this one that I straight up could not. Right. I guess I'm just kind of wondering, like, Ugh. like, like why? why? Yeah. Shock yeah. Value. I guess that is my big question. Shock value. I understand like why watching, like why some people would want to watch. I personally don't. But why would you want to be on the receiving end of the hatchet? I don't. Just, I didn't watch Taylor Swift's all too well ten minute version on YouTube. So I guess it's like I am not understanding that. There's just like different strokes for different folks, I think is oh, the point I'm trying to okay. make. I don't, I don't know. Do we want to talk about? The E word? The E word. I, so we've been, we've had so many requests to not. To not talk. Make this an entire show about euphoria, but we record on Mondays. It, <laughs> it's not our fault. I, I don't want to say too much. But I will say we could we could probably sp speed it up. Yeah, I don't have a ton to say either. It was it was just like so heartbreaking. Like I don't even like I I have nothing to say. Like it was just so sad. I have something to say and heartbreaking. And I like felt sick the whole time. Okay, yeah. I felt sick, and you know that I was having really bad Sunday scaries yesterday, yeah. um, due to what I did on Saturday. But it's not the show. It was not the episode to watch. No, in the space that I was in, and also. It's gotten too real. I wish yeah. when it was, I, I, I miss when it was just like attractive people making out and like With glitter. it was very casual and fun and it was easy to make fun of. I don't even want to touch, like it's not fun anymore. It was too real. No, it was, it made real, me, yeah, it made, it, was me feel, it made me sad and anxious and I was, yeah, I was closing my eyes most of the episode. I just, I, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't have a, nothing I, really to say there. Don't have a ton to say on that. I, I, every time after I watch it, I, ha I have to put on something. Light and fresh, yeah. So I can go to sleep. I yeah, I put on some some show tunes and just kind of sing it out, you know. Yeah, so I'm sure you do the same thing. I don't even know what is a show tune like Broadway oh. musicals. Do you know one Broadway musical? Because that was like when I in middle school, like that's all I wanted to do was be on Broadway, even though I have no abilities in that area. You can sing. We've covered Qu this quietly and in the shower. Um, no, I don't know. I don't think but, I know any. Okay, wow. West Side Story. Good Broadway. job, Connor. Wicked. Oh my God. Broadway. Yes. Um, Kiss your brain. Mm, what's the one with Miranda sings or Lynn Miranda? Miranda. <laughs> I just had a stroke. <laughs> Lynn Manuel. Yeah, Lynn Manuel. His? Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah, you are so good, Connor. Yeah, I'm nailing it today. Um. Anyways, I'm anyway. so sorry. I think we just got off on like a full blown That's tangent. That's okay. But that happened. I want to talk to you about. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, have you seen the Kim Kardashian and uh, Kanye West? Yeah, I have. Online debacle. Yeah, that's another thing that kind of just makes me sad. Yeah. <laughs> what do you What do you think? Well, for background info, I think Kanye started posting a screenshot 
of the TikTok rules and regulations because he's upset about the fact that North yeah. is on TikTok and he doesn't know what to do because Kim is the primary caregiver and he's like, how do I get my daughter off of TikTok? Well, his, his first screenshot was a picture of, of a TikTok that she posted. Right. And it was like, this is my first divorce. Like, uh -huh. how do I handle right. this? And so he thinks it's inappropriate for her to be on TikTok. So naturally he's going to post Posts. with her giving her a little bit of a platform. Right, right. A, a screenshot of her, her profile on his massive Instagram account. Yeah. Um, and then Kim came back and was like, handle this like privately, please. Like maybe if you, maybe if you'd respond to one of your three lawyers this year. Right. I mean, I just stand her so much. And Kanye has since deleted all of the photos on his Instagram. To me? Like, this worries me. Like, obviously. It's so sad. Well, because he did this before, a similar thing, and then had like a full-blown right, right. mental it's, breakdown. It's clearly yeah, mental it's, illness. It's, it's freaking is... me out. But lighter than that, yeah. the more Kardashian stuff. <laughs> did you see the Harry Jowsey thing? And Khloe Kardashian thing? Wait, but really quickly, <laughs> the funny thing about the Kanye thing was that he was like, you kidnapped North. Like, I couldn't go to her birthday party because you wouldn't give me the address. And it was at Kylie's house. Like, do you not know where Kylie lives? Are you asking me? No, oh. I'm asking. Con I'm talking to Kanye right now. Oh, but you know, just Kanye, like, if you're listening, Kanye, if you're Kylie's listening, house. it was literally at Kylie's house. What are you doing? Yeah, but sorry, Harry Jowsey. No, I just <laughs> saw uh, the the Instagram account Dumois posted that someone that works at a PR agency got confirmation that Harry Jowsey had rented a Maybach or like Rolls Royce or some ridiculous car. And bought a bunch of flowers and was driving them over to Khloe Kardashian's house because right. they've been seeing each other. And, and then she commented it, on it. Wasn't she like, I'd rather fucking die? No, she said, absolutely not oh. true in all caps. <laughs> so I don't know if that confirms or denies, but it sounds like we... No, yeah, I don't think that that's it. Well, then he posted a... Harry Jazzy posted a photo dump. And one of the photos was a photo of flowers, like smack dab in the middle of his tin. It was a picture of like a Maybach and with like flowers... Yeah, back. I I don't know, but I don't I don't think that's something that we have to worry about. Is Chloe I just and Harry? I just think it's really that good. is really good. So it's just so funny. Like this timeline that we live in, we're like, like like that's, uh, like a, possibility. that's a possibility. Like yeah. that could happen. Yeah, and I don't really like keep up with that, but like that is just like I miss the days of yore when like massive celebrities like would not even know that people existed, and she's responding to this. So like. She knows who he My is. My like, one wish for Chloe is that her next man is just like someone she meets on the street that will just, is not famous, doesn't play sports, doesn't act, whatever, and just will treat her right, you know? And it's just like a, a no one, not a no one, but like nobody knows who they are. I think that that's, Chloe, if you're listening to this at all, I think that would be really great for you. And if you need any connections... I can introduce to my friend Connor or I think yeah or I think maybe someone me else. and maybe I would fit into this Travis Barker Pete Davidson group. I mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we could You would fit right in there. We could shoot the shit and we could maybe me and the boys could go do what would we do together? We could like I don't even golf mini golf you Pete me, Travis, Pete and Travis Machine Gun Kelly can can caddy. Yeah. That would be really nice. Yeah, that would be fun. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Manscaped. Roses are red, violets are blue. Don't let a wild pube wreck you. Mm -mm. Never. Mm -mm, Valentine's Day is just around the corner and our sponsors at Manscaped are here for you with the best tools to get your balls ready <laughs> for the special occasion. This V-Day, it's time to join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming with our exclusive offer, go to manscaped.com and use code B A N D C B N C for 20% off and free shipping. The holidays went by so quickly. Did you remember to take care of your package with the best tools for the job? The Performance Package 4.0 from Manscaped is just the thing every guy needs in their life to make each and every day just a little more special. Yep. The number one product in this package is the Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. <laughs> And I think we all. I think we can all a use a little bit. Yeah. Skin. Yeah. I'd like to propose making February 13th a national holiday as National Shave Your Balls Day. Who's with me? I'm with you. All right. 
I think this one holiday, this is one holiday that men and women can get behind. And Manscaped created their products for a night just like this, and it will make your V-Day date say, wow, that's a great set of balls you have there. And I can do a little reenactment from a female POV. Wow, that's a great set of balls you have there. Go to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer of 20% off and free shipping with the code BNC. That's B-A-N-D-C. Your balls and your special someone will thank you. Get 20% off and free shipping with code BNC. That's B-A-N-D-C at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code BNC, B-A-N-D-C. Join Cupid and shoot your arrow with Manscaped this Valentine's Day. Okay. Um, Something I kind of want to talk about yeah. is that I think people are, even though we gave a, I, what I thought was a solid intro last episode, people are still kind of wondering who we are. And I just want to say that we, we, ha- we are from, I think, TikTok is where people would, would know us from. And I think that something unique about us is the way we make our TikToks, which is something that we've been talking about. Yes. Yeah. I was like, where is she? Where no, are you going I know. with this? Yeah. Um, sometimes I start and just you got to kind of find it on the way. But do you want to talk about like the process of how you might make a video? And I think it's pretty similar to yeah. the way I might. Yeah. So, I mean, we've kind of like shirked the question, like, what are you? What are you? Right. It'd be like content and we do digital stuff. Right. Um, I think... At our core, we're TikTokers. Right, I Because that's think, where we started yeah. was TikTok. Um, but it's it's more in like the comedy talking, even even skit-based stuff. But yeah, one of the ways that we kind of figured out that we do like the same Similar sort of- Similar kind of stuff. Creative process yeah. would be these things we call seeds. And I am going to burp. And okay. you can pick them. Basically, the way that- <clears throat> We start with a little seed, which is a tiny idea that we usually kind of write on our notes app and then either we'll come back to it and make it, you know, make a seed into a larger plant or tree, what have you, whatever comes from seeds, or we'll kind of just not know what we were talking about. Um, So I took some screenshots of some seeds that were on my phone that I would maybe want you to look at and kind of we could see if I made them a video or we could try to decipher what they would have been. I don't know if you have any that. I have one just off of the top of my head that I found the other day. Yeah. Um, So let me, let me try to pull it up. Basically it's a note and all these notes are always at like 11 PM to 2 AM. Like they're always like the most random. So I have, I have some that are, that are decent. Like I can decipher them. Yeah. One of them I is. Want, give me one. Matthew McConaughey in a Lincoln commercial. You know where any, have you seen those? Yeah. It, yeah. He's very like ambient. He's like driving and it's nighttime and there's all these beautiful shots and he's just like got his green lights voice where he's just like, sometimes you got to let the wind take you where the wind, like it's just like the, like the most vague, absurd stuff. But I thought it'd be funny if it switched into him getting like being pulled over for like a DUI. That's really good. Yeah. Did you film that or no, is it just because I don't know where to begin? So that's the other thing about these things. I'm like, that was a brilliant idea at 2 a.m. But like, where where, where do I go? From you there? need so, to make that a thing. And guys, don't steal that idea, or we we can cause legal suit <sighs> for sure. Or if you have an idea of how I could script that out I would take or or DM Connor or yeah, uh, either or, way yeah let me I can read you some of mine but I, I have another one pulled up if oh, you want okay me to just... yeah I do and I'm just gonna take off my phone case because it's green and I wouldn't want that oh right to interfere but here is my business card for a magician that I was in love with hi Zach um <sighs> yeah okay go ahead so one of them this one is also from let's see where I just lost it oh I don't know if we can get this on camera it's really it's pretty far away but this one is from 1.03 a.m. Right. And it just says, Streep Club. Streep Club? Bullet point, Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> what? There is something like that. Like Meryl Streep like Club. Like something of Streep. Like it's an Instagram account and it's just Meryl like in like different scenarios. Like Meryl like as a topping on a sandwich or like Meryl like... I don't know, just like Meryl in different scenarios. Maybe yeah. you were inspired by that. Maybe, maybe subconsciously. I, I haven't seen that, but that was, that, that's, that's one that I'm like. I like Streep Club. <laughs> Streep Club. Mer- merch idea, <laughs> so which is funny. a picture of Meryl in the back. Um, 
Okay, I can give you one of mine. All right, give me it. This one was funny because your name was in it. Oh, right. And it the heading is phone call. And this is from eight, February 16th, 2021, so a year ago. It says, oh, hi, mom. Up whose ass, question mark? Then 16 enters. Oh. Wait, what flavor? And then it says, Connor, it's for you. So I'm, do you have any? No, you're going to have to piece that one together. I literally have no <laughs> idea what own. that could have been. And then this one is just, I don't know if you can see this. It just says, every kiss begins with K. <laughs> and like, I don't know where I was going with that at all. And I, I told you about that, the one a while ago that we actually tried to work on, which was you versus the guy you're, she tells you not to worry oh about. Oh God, that was, But yeah. it's an intruder in your home. Right. And so it would be like, the girlfriend of this person in the spit is like, um, like, babe, don't worry. Like we left the door unlocked, but like no one's going to be in there. And it's like, there's someone in there and that's the guy she told you not to worry about. Right. That we one did, needed work. We <laughs> did end up filming that. Yeah. It and it, blew it, chunks. It, it wasn't, it wasn't good. And then this one is 73 questions with Vogue, but you're flirting with the cameraman and you take a piece of clothing off every time he asks a question, which we I yeah. ha- made you film with me, but it turned out a little different. But that was a funny one. I liked that one. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that that... So that should give a little... I mean, I don't know if that I gave mean, any clarity to anybody regarding some background. But yeah. That's creative. I hope pro- that helps. That's kind of our creative process. And a lot of it... I'm looking at these now and I just... They are not English. But... Hopefully that helped. Yeah, it gave um, some guidance. Some for some for some further uh, background. Yeah, we do a ton of other stuff too. Like for sure, I'm an I'm an investor. You are in in what? In any like in my own life, mm-hmm. I invest my time uh, into stuff, and I also am minting an NFT this week. A non fungible token. Non fungible. Because I want to end the stereotype that women don't know what. NFTs are yeah. because I know that it's a non-fungible token, and what it basically is fungible. is that fungible. I said G. I said fungible, okay. and what it basically um, is is speaking. that it's an object or an image or anything that you own in a non-fungible sort of way. I hope that helped. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, sorry. What were you saying? I just had to kind of for people that don't know what an NFT is, I was right. just kind of explaining that to you guys. Well, I'll be minting an NFT this week. What do you mean min- on Thursday? What is minting? An See, NFT? okay, here's the situation, and I'm going to be fully transparent. I don't really understand. I feel like we just made up a bunch of words, but I do understand that there's some sort of transaction that occurs, and I'll be celebrating this this minting of of this image that I'm going to be purchasing with Ethereum. Don't even get me started on Ethereum. You kind of <laughs> lost me there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like we just like, what were we out of words? We couldn't just say like I'm buying, I'm buying this thing. Right. I'm buying this shit. So you're going to buy, what's a, what is Ethereum though in all seriousness? Ethereum is, is a, it's a, it's like Bitcoin. But at the time right. that I purchased it, it was way more affordable than it is now, which means I've made money investing in Ethereum because it does ebb and flow much like the ocean. Sure. So what's your NFT? Um, it's a little like robot person in a mask. I, a picture or a, a sculpture? It's a picture. It's it's a it's a digital image. Uh huh. So, I, so, right. Enjoy. I enjoy. Completely understand. You're why. sitting in the presence of someone who's yeah. about to own that little robot yeah. mask, and I understand why digitally. someone would want to do that. Yeah. And, well, I mean, a lot of people want to do it. Make, no, I. Yeah, I get it. And I I know that a lot of people that are listening Connor, right now. Hey, look at me. I get it, babe. I I know where you're coming from. Hey, I'm sensing like a See, lot of tension right now because no. I think that you might be. I can put in a good word if you'd like to mint. I don't want. I don't need to today. But I'm just telling you that I support you and I'm standing with you and I understand. I get my it. I get ha- it all. My I get. To- I'm an NFT girl at heart, and I get it. Right is what I want you to know. I love. I love. N- not I heard- fungible tokens. Not fungible tokens. There's a G in it. Like, I'm just not hearing you say the G. Non-fungible tokens. Okay. Plural. We have probably six takes of you saying fundable. <laughs> but who am I to keep count? Um, no, so Justin Bieber just got an NFT. I don't know if you saw. He mm-hmm. got he got a sad ape. 
and there it is. So, so he owns they that. They look and a that, lot alike, and that right? is his. Yeah, um, yeah. maybe the facial shape, or so it's his. And if I were to screenshot that, I would be stealing his image. And you that would go to said, jail. I don't know the ins and outs of the legal system, but I don't think I would go to jail. But I don't know. And just for reference, is this like a $5 thing or like right, 500 right, right. I understand where you're coming from. He actually went ahead and he bought it for the hefty sum of $1.29 million USD. And that was actually five times the market price. And so I don't know it, what his game plan was for spending. It was for 500 Ethereum. I mean. And Ethereum individually are worth X USD. Uh, and so he did buy that board ape. I might have fooled you guys when I said that I understand it. And I know you probably were really believing me when I said that. But I am just at a loss for buying, spending millions of dollars on that cartoon picture. This is the future. Yeah, I guess. Gwyneth Paltrow said it. That's gospel. Yeah. I mean, I think I just have to accept that this is not something that. You don't want to be on the wrong side yeah. of her story here. So I would suggest maybe l looking into mm -hmm. minting alongside mm -hmm. me at some point. Thank you. And I can't wait to mint holding your hand. Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp. We talk about BetterHelp a lot on this show and therapy in general. And this month we're discussing some of the stigmas around mental health. Some people think you should wait until things are unbearable to go to therapy. But that's not true. Therapy is a tool to utilize before things get worse, and it can help you avoid those lows. Totally. Mm -hmm. We've been taught that mental health shouldn't be a part of normal life, but that is wrong. We take care of our bodies with the gym, the doctor, and nutrition. We should be focusing on our minds just as much. It's true. That's true. I'm in therapy. You I can just vouch got a new for therapist. it. I'm feeling pretty okay. It's it's and it shows. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm um I'm I'm I'm. You're dabbling. On, yeah. I'm figuring it out. Yeah. I had never had a therapist until this year, so. We're all figuring it yeah, out. Yeah, we are. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Brooke and Connor make a podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com forward slash B A N D C B N C. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash B A N D C. Do you watch the Winter Olympics? <laughs> Speaking of NFTs, no. do you watch the Winter Olympics at all? <laughs> no, no, and what the hell? Who is it not? Is it winter still? It's February. Well, it's with California, so it's kind of hard to tell, but I think winter goes through March. Yeah, the Winter Olympics are on. You could have fooled me. How'd, yeah. they, how'd they so quiet? I think maybe I'm just like, it's tough because the Super Bowl is coming up. And so I'm like, everything I see is like Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. But mm -hmm. justice for the Winter Olympics. I You could shove the Winter Olympics down my throat. I don't mind. I think that they should give me, give it more air time. More air time. Yeah. I feel like what's the other season that the other Olympics are in? Summer? Uh, yeah. It's going to be summer. Yeah. I, I think I prefer those just because. What if they had like autumn Olympics? <laughs> That what would pump, it be like pumpkin chunkin raking uh, we used to we had a pumpkin chunkin competition in high pumpkin school chunkin? pumpkin chunkin we had trunk or treat what's trunk or treat what well, you finish your pumpkin chunkin oh uh pumpkin chunkin was just we had I'm to make a de thank you connor we had to make a device that would chunk and by chunk i mean like hurl a pumpkin and we could see like who could catapult the pumpkin the farthest you're just talking about like a catapult competition yeah but school. it's a pumpkin chunker at the end of the day at the end of the day i think at we can all agree on that okay well I agree. pumpkin chunking so that could be all of that um i did not really participate in the building of the chunker itself but i did cheer my teammates on and was able to go buy the pumpkin <clears throat> that's so that's that was an integral part of yeah it. someone had to buy the pumpkin and that was me now trunk or treat uh occurred in my neighborhood because um i think what my parents didn't know when they moved me into our neighborhood was that it was a retirement community, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so all of the older individuals in my community were like, stay off of my property. Right. <laughs> so anyone wanting to participate in trick-or-treating could do it out of the back of cars <laughs> at this parking lot. And so we would go. That's like, so sad. It's, it's <laughs> horrific. And like, that's, 
where probably a lot of my my trauma stems from. I never got to go to house to house. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's I'm why, sorry. That's why I signed up for BetterHelp <laughs> <laughs> to discuss that. No, I I don't really. I like the Summer Olympics yeah. a lot. I like the Winter Olympics. I like to watch the gymnastics. Is that winter or summer? I think summer. It could be either because you think do it inside. You can do it inside. Like you need to. But that's what I, I'm pretty sure that's summer. The thing <laughs> I know about winter is that there's bobsledding, which is something that I think I would be good at. One, because I think I'm like pretty tiny and can see myself kind of condensing into that sure, sled. Sure. And I think it's the only sport where you could truly be laying down with your eyes closed and have a shot, which is something that I feel mm. compatible with, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Cuba Gooding Jr. Anyway, was, did that whole documentary about it. Cool, on bobsledding? Cool runnings. I'll have to check it out. Thanks the Jamaican, for the wreck. Jamaican bobsled Thanks team. for the wreck. Great. It's a classic movie. Okay, I'll give it a, I'll okay. give it a watch. Thank what you. Are any, I don't even know a single other. Do we know any skiing, other? Skiing. Skiing is an Olympic. Snow, snowboarding. Tubing. That's like X Games. Do they do that in the Olympics? Oh, I guess you can be an Olympian. Ice fishing. What? Yes. You're making stuff I'm up. I'm not. Ice fishing is in the Olympics. You're going to go like snow angeling. Yes. Like shoveling. Snowman building. Shoveling my front porch. Manscaping. <laughs> yeah, all that um, is kind of. I think I would be really bad, on the other hand, at that one where they fly down the mountain and then hit that jump and they're just in the air for like forever. Did you, do you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I would die before I hit the ground. I would die midair. Oh, winter Olympic sports. Okay, there's alpine skiing, and I think that's what I'm talking about when I... Curling! How could I forget curling? Figure skating, ice... Oh, what? Luging? Luge. Luge. The luge. I love luging. It's a good... I could say luge for the rest of the podcast and Me have too. It be... Let's just slip luge in. Okay. Wait, um, I'm... Ske what's skeleton? That sounds... So there's a like sport a called sentence. skeleton, and to Why me... Why am I not seeing... Oh, there's Bob's. Bob slaying? I thought it was Bob sledding. No, Bob slaying is... is 2022 because they're slaying it out there queen <laughs> um i don't know what a biathlon is where are you seeing that i'm seeing it top top row biathlon oh that looks like shooting some shooting hmm. yeah they should be more clear about what these yeah. are nordic combined oh. biathlon oh biathlon would be a triathlon with only two events i'm, I'm assuming oh so not shooting <laughs> No, you're no. shooting. You're shooting a bow and arrow. Oh. Cool. It's, it's skiing. It, it's a little bit of both. It's a, it's mix, a combination of skiing and it's shooting a mixed bag. when it comes down to it. Um, well, awesome. I think I would be really bad at ski jumping. That's my answer. I think I would be really good at whatever skeleton is. I'm sure I'd be good at that. And I'm good at pop Because it sounds like I'm going to, it sounds like you just die. Which I feel like I would succeed. put on a show <laughs> and then be... I lay it all on the line for my right. country. That's just me. Okay. Oh. Okay, so skeleton is just like, you, you're laying on the, I don't really. That also, I am like a big fan of winter sports because it seems like you can do a lot of them laying down. Skeleton at Beijing 2022. Oh, it's in Beijing. Okay. You know, I've been, you know, I've been to Beijing. I do actually know you've been. How um, was it? It was scary. It was the scariest time of my life because I got on. Didn't you go alone or something? Yep. I got on my flight and all of my friends missed their flight from San Francisco. They were all supposed to meet me in San Francisco and then fly to China. And I was calling them. Was this like a spring break in Beijing kind of situation? No, what were we, you doing? We were going to Bali, Indonesia. And for me to get there from, where was I coming from? I guess from Texas. I had to fly through San Francisco and then go to Hong Kong or uh, Beijing or Hong Kong. I don't know, China. And then then go to Bali. But all of my friends were coming from Hawaii and they were going to, they were going to fly from Hawaii mm -hmm. to San Francisco backwards, which mm -hmm. didn't make a ton of sense. But because of the time change of our flight, they thought it was the next day. So I got on my flight and got to where, wherever in China and I was by myself and I had to like navigate and it's not like super English friendly naturally. Right. Like, like reading wise and like transit wise. So I was just like, I hope I'm going to the right area. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful, but I was scared for my yeah. life. Yeah, how long were you there? 48 hours. That is scary. I can't even go to Florida by myself, barely, so. Yeah. Thinking about you in, the, in that time. Thanks. Yeah. No, it was a good time, and I like to talk about it, but. 
Okay, one more little bit of pop culture for you, and what? then we can move on to maybe giving some people advice. Have you heard there's a New Girl podcast? No. So it's, did you watch New Girl? Not really. I don't have anything against New Girl yeah. like I would normally. I feel like a lot of the bits that you do, like people man always periods, say Schmidt. Well, even like the man period bit, which is a Winston bit, like that's from New Girl. Oh. I feel like your sense of humor is very consistent with that show. Maybe I'll check it and out. And I implore you to check it out because I it is really, really good. Okay. But anyway, there's a New Girl podcast with just like the cast of New Girl. So it's Zoe Deschanel, Hannah, Simon, or Simone. That's the girl who played Cece. And I think Lamorne, I don't know how you say his name, but it's Winston. Um, they're just like rewatching New Girl and going through the episodes via podcast and one of the things that zoe that's said that's what always sunny in philadelphia does too really yeah but remind me to tell you something that makes me sad after i finish my thought but zoe was saying that the producer said that her and jake johnson who plays nick had too much chemistry which is really interesting for all of us mm. people who are fans of the nick and jess okay kind of relationship what could possibly too much chemistry well, here, look like. And Connor, I'm glad you asked because this is something I've been giving a lot of thought. They, the Nick and Jess romance was very much like a slow burn. Both of them kind of, the characters didn't know they liked each other, but it was very clear to the audience that they were in love and that they were going to end up together. And it was so, so good. And people loved it so much because like the sensual, the sexual tension was like, like fun. Whereas like in the office or friends, like you have one character like Jim in the office is like pining after Pam who doesn't like him back. And it's like not really enjoy. I hate Jim it's, and Pam. Okay. Well, I, you're uh, okay. But um, it's like not really enjoyable to watch because it's like sad for Jim. And like in friends, Ross pining after Rachel, it's like not really enjoyable because it's just like, ugh, like this is sad. Whereas in new girl, it's like enjoyable because they, both don't know it yet and they're flirty, but they're no one's kind of heartbroken and sad over it. So you're not uncomfortable and sad watching. So it's really just the sweet spot. And I think new girl really did that romance. Right. And that I had a lot of thoughts on that because well, I was well, thinking I a lot about it. it. Right. They did it wrong. No, they way. were just saying ease up because we're not, you're not supposed to be together quite yet. You know, you're going too hard, but that sexual tension in that chemistry <laughs> season two, episode 15, Connor, yeah. I encourage you to go watch that um, because that is just how it's done when they finally kiss. But it is just that show is so good. Okay, well, and Nick I'll, I'll, and, Nick and Jess, Nick and Jess did it right. No, I but think then, they, I, I I do genuinely think what you're saying is incorrect because they did. The producer said there was too much sexual, or Zoe Deschanel said there was too much sexual tension. Yeah, before they got together. Well, if if we look at any because they were classic just, they examples, were trying to take it a little slower. If we look at any classic examples, Jacob Lordy and Joey King. Mm -hmm. well, they weren't together in real life, though. Yes, they were. No, I, Jacob and Joey were, but not Nick and Jess. I bet that they wanted to be, but they had to hold themselves well, back. Well, here, actually, maybe. I didn't actually listen to the podcast, so I kind of don't 100% know what I'm talking about, but I'd like to think that I do as an as an avid fan of the show. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the show, they do get together, but then, like, a season later, they break up for absolutely no reason. Like, they were just so in love. It's because they were having sex I, on no, set, they, probably. I swear, no, they, I don't think they were. Zoe was married. So I wouldn't be spreading those rumors if I were you just yet, Connor. But anyway, I think that, that maybe like they burned out too quickly oh. or something. I don't know. Like what else could they have possibly done, I think, is why they broke them up so that they could go back to that like sexual tension part instead of the like comfortably together part. Well, that's a fast. People liked the sexual tension. That's a fascinating insight that yeah. they shared with us that they chose to share with us. Yeah. And I don't know if they, if my takes are right. Cause again, I didn't listen to the podcast and I'm just pretending like I did, Yeah, but which is a common theme of uh, me on this podcast. I wouldn't take anything I say to, Oh yeah. As, as truth. That's a good call yeah. too. Like yeah. we're rarely doing background research. So these are just thoughts. Yeah. So please feel free to correct me as or, I am, or, or, or don't, don't, or keep actually it keep it to yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's that. Okay. Yeah. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Bud Light. Zero Carbs Beer is here. We're excited to be one of the first podcasts ever to partner with the brand new Bud Light Next, their first zero carb beer hitting shelves now, just in time for the big game. It's super crisp, light beer with 80 calories and 4% ABV. Zero carbs, zero 
in the way of possibility. To celebrate zero in the way of your possibilities, Bud Light Next wants to add zeros to your bank account. So from now until February 17th, if you spot a zero, you could have a chance to win $10,000. All you have to do is spot something containing or resembling a zero, tweet it using hashtag spot a zero and hashtag sweepstakes for your chance to win. You can zeros see there everywhere. are zeros everywhere. I can't stop thinking about it. Where's the place that you would see a zero? Mm, my bagel your, that I your ordered bagel this that morning. You ordered that you didn't get. Would have been looking I'm like a zero. A watch. Your watch is looking a bit like a zero to me. Your eyeballs. Y- yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to leave the parking lot because my gas is on zero. Smart. You are just always so. thinking, Connor. There's just a ton of chances to win. They're endless. Again, spot a zero, tweet it with the hashtag spot a zero and hashtag sweepstakes for your chance to win $10,000. And make sure to stock up on brand new Bud Light Next for the big game too. To find a retailer who delivers right to your door, head to budlight.com slash next. Enjoy responsibly. Messaging for 21 plus. See official rules at budlight.com slash spot a zero rules. Void where prohibited. I'm ready to give some people advice. How about you? Yeah, I'm like as somebody who know who has no idea what they're talking about 100 percent of the time. Yeah. I'm ready to give you guys advice. <laughs> now let's give some advice. Okay. Without doing back on research. So we did get um, an email. We got a couple. We had a yeah. ton of emails. Yeah, actually. thank you guys. So, and just as a reminder, the email. If you guys want to ask us anything um, or need some advice from two people who don't know what they're talking about, it's dear b and c at gmail.com. So we encourage you to shoot over an email. We got a, we we sifted through them and they were really good. Um, I want to talk really quickly. We got a we got a really intense one. Actually, can, can we start with my favorite one below? But, so so this person wrote in, <clears throat> and the email subject line was the kid I nanny sees ghosts. Do you want me? Which to- obviously I'm op- you're opening that email. Right. Like, I'm like, of what course, is what's of happening course. in here? Um, but she said, hi, Broken Connor. I've been nannying this kid for almost two years. The family lives in a house that is over a hundred years old. Since day one, this kid has told me about seeing ghosts in the house and have always interacted with them. And that's in quotes. So we don't know what that means. Don't want to finish a snack. Don't worry. The ghost will eat it. Most of the ghosts were nice, apparently, but not at all. Not all of Mm -hmm. them. Some had names. Others didn't. A few traveled from room to room, but most remained in specific areas of the house. The two ghosts they call by name are Dodie and Maggie. The I'm getting chills. The <laughs> other day, he he wanted to play with Maggie, so he goes to the fireplace to summon her. Shit. He screeches in terror. I feel like I'm reading a, a thriller know, right now. Hurls into my lap and shivers. I ask what happened. He said, I asked her, and she just looked at me mean and said, uh, and I know that that's the sound that it makes because, because I, in, the, in the next line, in all caps. They make this scary blank face and make the exact same fucking noise as the girl on the grudge does, literally verbatim. And I'm going to do it again. Uh, I've been keeping the parents updated on the ghost saga. They got curious and went back through the homeowner's records. Years ago, a mother and a daughter both lived and died in the home. Their names? Dorothy and Margaret. Holy so shit, what I didn't Judy read that and part. Maggie. So Dodie, Dodie and, and Maggie. Maggie. Do you guys have any paranormal stories? Do you believe in ghosts? I, I, I have I'm one. Speechless. I know that. Like, I didn't read that last line when I was. I don't previewing think this I message. have any paranormal stories because if even one second of that happened to me, I would be running the other way so quickly. There would be a brook shaped hole in whatever <laughs> in whatever door or wall that. I mean, I don't know how you've made it this far. Truly, I have something. Tell to say. me. Get the fuck out I, of there. I don't know. Yeah, Quit I don't, job. babe. Like, I don't know what you're doing I'd there. Like, DM me. I have a bunch of. Friends I will come. That, I will come pick you up. DM, like, I have a bunch of friends that are nannies. There's plenty of nannying opportunities, especially in LA. Okay, I have a paranormal story. Tell me. Um. So I used to work when I was in high school at this antique shop that my neighbor owned, and where I'm from in Texas, it's like a historic. There's a historic house tour that we have to do as part of our school agenda. Mm-hmm. We have to go house to house and there's like it's there's just all this history like all the 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 governor of Texas, OG governor, Sam Houston like has a house there that he's he's long gone but um I'm working in this house and 
I would be there alone all day. And I like, like things would move. Like there was apparently like a mother and a, and a whole family that whose dad like killed the mom and the kids and then hung himself upstairs in the house. And like there was one time when a skateboard, which is like wooden wheels. Cause mm-hmm. they, he was just straight up. Like my neighbor was just like selling stuff out of the house. Cause it right. was already in the house. It like rolled one time and it was like sitting on the ground. Like there's no one else in this house. It rolled. I, I was, I would carry scissors with me around the house. Like I'm going to stab a ghost. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And then there was another time I wasn't there for this, but apparently there was one time when like the curtain upstairs as he was like locking up, like fluttered and all the windows are shut in this house. And who reported the fluttering? The, my neighbor. And then he's like, okay, well enjoy. I'm like 15. I'm enjoy like being here by yourself all day. Like, what? <laughs> I need the, I don't know how you didn't I run out the, of there I either. I need the cash. I mean, there's just no amount of money in the world. I needed the for cash me. for four locos for the weekend. But I, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and then there was one other time when there was a magnifying glass, like sitting all dusty yeah. on a dictionary and it was sitting over the word malaria. And when we looked up like the records for the house, like I guess the dad had malaria and was going to die and he killed his family and then hung himself. I feel it. Are you serious? I may have, it. I may have I think exaggerated I, I, you just parts lied of the to stories, my face. but I, I may have. I may you have. made that up. No, I didn't make it you up. You made that up. I didn't make it up. If I call your mom and ask if you worked at an antique shop she'll when you say were 15, yes. she'll say yes. And she'll say I carried okay. scissors around the house. <laughs> well, I'll be calling her and I'll report back Do you back believe in everyone. ghosts? Hmm. As a, of now, no. Hmm, and I don't feel like I'm going to be. Huge uh, like fucking I, mistake. I say I believe... that and I feel like a ghost is going to come right out and just absolutely have its way with me. But maybe it wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> maybe it wouldn't be so bad after all. Are you talking like <laughs> like manscaped vibes? <laughs> no, but um <laughs> I I have never had an experience with a ghost, and so I can only speak to what I've experienced. Yeah. And so I have not had an experience with a ghost because I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you that there were curtains fluttering. Um but I I'll believe it when I see it. It's supposed basically to be an, is what an entertaining, I'm entertaining podcast. People are listening to this like, oh my God, is that? I know. I'm not going to lie through my teeth. Mm, well. Like someone. I guess I'll, that's why they call me fibs. Because when Connor told me that Joe Biden came out as bisexual <laughs> the other day and it just like for no reason lied to me. She goes, oh, <laughs> oh good. <laughs> like, that's awesome. Like I was happy for him. Yeah, obviously. I mean, he just photo dumped. So it wasn't like he's clearly. Is photo dumping a bisexual trait? No, it's no. Okay. I'm just saying like, he's clearly. I'm, I'm really, I'm going to dig myself. Yeah. I'll, into, I'll, I'll go ahead and change the subject hole. so that we can move on. I I'll mean, he's you. liberal. He's a liberal King. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Dude, so we have another out. email from, <laughs> <laughs> we have another email from Janet. Let's call her Janet. Cause it's a fake name. Okay. Do you want to read this one? Yeah, I sure do. Dear Brooke and Connor. Get in there then. I am in. Dear Brooke and Connor, how do you deal with a friend who only wants to talk about themselves? I've known this friend for over six years and recently I've really noticed how little she asks or cares about me or my life. She often zones out when I'm talking and even interrupts me in the middle of my sentences. She talks down to me and our other friends as if what we are saying is absolutely stupid. I love and care for her, but it's becoming exhausting to be around her. I feel like I'm a side character in my own life put here to listen to her. She's kind and sweet sometimes, but most of the time it doesn't feel like she genuinely cares about me or our other friends. I am not a confrontational person, so I have just distanced myself a bit, which makes me feel so guilty when she claims to miss me and wants to hang out. What would you do? Good question. And I think, Janet, this is something that a lot of people go through a lot. I have actually been through this. And what I have done, which I'm not saying is the best thing, but it worked for me is to hang out with this person and then bring uh, what nothing i'm just <laughs> <laughs> it, it bring up the issue when it happens like when you feel like you're not being listened to or when this person is just going on and on and be like hey like i haven't said a word in like 40 minutes you know and then kind of just like so that you have like a clear example of what's happening because whenever I go up to someone and like bring something up, I have a really hard time thinking of examples of times that it's happened. Um, so I think just like doing it when it's happening, it, like you, no one can kind of deny that. And it's just like very clear what the problem is. But 
I don't know. What do you think? I ghost people. Like if they're starting to annoy me, I'm not even talking. I'm just like, okay. Like, yeah, but if you feel if you feel bad about it and feel guilty about ghosting her, which I would too, because you know, like some people have feelings. Um, that I think like bringing it up when it's happening is like uh, is maybe a good way to do it, or just like the absolute worst way to do it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think you'd be aggressively mean too. I think you'd come back and be like, "Shut the f- shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up." You talk too much about yourself. Mm-hmm. You can do that. I've done that too. I know you're not okay. confrontational, but yeah. I have a few drinks. I wouldn't. Okay, sure, that's fine. Oh, we don't. Sure. This have is a, take have it, a few take, drinks take and then the say. Sh- salt. Have a few drinks and then say, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> that's like what I would do. Either go somewhere, tell them to shut up. Yeah. That so is, again, that again, is the fastest way to take care of this. Again, what I would do is two avenues to take care of this. If you care about this person, want to be friends with them, bring it up while it's happening, because then I think that that's like. Well, you can turn "shut the fuck up" into a joke. It's like "shut up." Yeah, but then if you make it a joke, it's gonna like set the precedent that the, it's a joke, where it's like she's feeling really seriously upset about this. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Hope that helped. Um, okay, should we do? Yeah. One more. Oh, I like this one. Okay. So we got, we got one more and then I think this is going to be a good one. I think so too. Um, this one, the subject line was platonic male and female friendships. It says MF, so it might yeah. be platonic motherfucking friendships, but uh, hi, Brooke and Connor. I'd like to hear your thoughts on whether straight men and women can have platonic friendships and if so, under what conditions. My boyfriend has a close female friend who refers to him as her best friend, snaps him every day and is yet to follow me on social media after over a year of dating and that I hadn't met until recently when I did meet her I was hoping she would be cool and put my mind at ease but she instead was incredibly sus she made a big deal of me asking if my boyfriend had told me certain stories and thanked me for not being weird about their relationship friendship not relationship which made me feel super weird I fully trust him and it's really not a big issue for us but I definitely got weird vibes from her and it made me think back to my own friendships with men and whether I actually believe male friend male female friendships can be platonic I'd like to think so, but literally all of my male friends have had feelings for me at some point. Ooh. Poor, poor girl. Oh, that's Aww. hard. <laughs> Sorry. And Love even, you, babe. <laughs> even my current boyfriend was my platonic friend at first. Thought you guys might have some opinions given that you are, in fact, a male, female, platonic friend. Oh, no, we hook up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Kidding. Not, that was a joke. Um, but, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I think uh, it's possible. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes. Most people know. Well, I think there's two parts to this. One, can you have a straight male and straight female be platonic friends? Two, there's something shady going on with your boyfriend's friend who is a girl. So to answer the first part, can male and female males and females be friends? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think I definitely Yes. I think so. I do think differently about my male friends than my female friends sometimes. Hmm. Hmm. And I'm going to shoot myself in the foot if I, if I elaborate yeah, on that. Continue? So, I mean, no, not really. Okay. If that's okay with you. No, I agree with you. I think that male, male and female people can be, I think they can be friends, but I do think like two individuals. Yeah. Can be friends. A hundred percent. If you have self-control. Yes. I, I'm going back to what I always say. Yes. I say, don't hook up with your friends. Don't hook up with your friends. Don't hook up with your friends. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I do think that a male and female can be friends. But that being said, I do like sometimes, like a day to day, I'll have a, like a, one day I'll have a crush on one of my guy friends, you know? Yeah. And I'll just be like, oh, like Connor looks super cute today. And I, if I was, if my boyfriend was really, really close friends with a straight girl, I would be worried that she or he are like thinking those things too. Even if it's like platonic, you're like, you're going to have those I mean, thoughts, yeah, you know? If you trust him, you trust so him. If, if she seems like. And I'm like, I'm not a super, like I'm a pretty jealous person. So I don't know if I would feel good about <sighs> that. I think most, most people like wouldn't. I've asked people before, like Logan, I've asked and she's like, no, there's no possible way that this is possible. I'm like, what are we talking about? Not everyone is like trying to hook up with each other right all the time. no but, i don't think people are trying to hook up with each other all the time i just think like inevitably there's gonna this girl, be like if you're attracted to guys there's gonna be yeah, those I, thoughts i think like do you trust your boyfriend cool that works 
Do you not trust your boyfriend? Well, I don't trust this girl. I think she seems really sketchy. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. And like, it seems great. You're in a committed, trustworthy relationship, but she seems shady. And I would be questioning like, why is her friendship so important to you yeah. if she's so shady? So what's your answer? My answer is yes. Males and females can have platonic friendships, but I do think it gets, there's an added level if there's a significant other involved. What do you think? Yeah. Do you agree? We're first time as our best friends, snaps around every day. How long have they been friends? I don't know. I think that depends too. Like I, my childhood friends, you know, like I, I'm going to be friends with them. Yeah, of course. You don't write. I think. But I, you're not, there's like a difference between being friends with them and then like obsessively communicating with them every single day. That's weird. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah anyway. I don't, there's something about this I'm not loving. Um, yeah. And I hope I hope that was helpful. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was. I don't know. I didn't no, think. I don't didn't. think we really gave her any advice. I, think I know. I think we were. Just, you got to talk to your boyfriend and be like, "What is going on with well, this?" Well, I check? think all that matters is if you're comfortable or not. It seems you, like you are because you trust your boyfriend, so that's fine. But this girl's you clearly know how going many, through it. You know how many people's significant others that are my close friends? I've been like, he better follow. You know, your your boyfriend better follow me back on Instagram, like. What is going, you know what I mean? I also think like if I were the boyfriend's friend, I would be super, super conscientious about like making sure the girlfriend is comfortable, you know, right. and it seems like she's not doing well, that. Well, I don't know if she's told so him I, that she feels this way because he may not see it as an issue. What I'm saying is like, I also have a little bit of an issue with like when my friends start dating someone or whatever, I'm like, oh, this is a me thing too. Like... My close friends are dating. Like if you start dating someone, I'm like expecting to be in, in the, the loop. In the throuple? In the throuple, in, in, in a way. Yeah. We don't need to be together 24-7, but I'm, I want to be in the loop. All right, so we're going to do a new thing that we're, we're trying it out. We're going to see how it goes. Um, we said last week we were going to start calling a listener uh, j just to chat and talk through some things. So we're going to try it out today. We're going to be calling Olivia. We're just going to chat. And I'm so super excited to see where Olivia this us, phone call takes us. Olivia sent us a message that said, <clears throat> I think you should give me a call. We can talk about career advice, the Nick Cannon taping I recently went to, and my dating life in New York City or anything else. And I can't wait to talk about those things, Olivia. Phone calls are tough. Phone calls are tough for some people. I hope that it's not. I'm one of them. Extremely awkward between. Oh, oh I'm freaking out. Shit, we're calling you, you now. You, you say the first thing. Okay. okay. Hello? Hey, Olivia. This is. Fibula. Hey, Connor. What's up? Fibula, Nothing. So oh, formal. Going I, by the hat, the, uh, well, the handle. I love it. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> hey, Brooke. Hey, oh Olivia. God. How are you? Sorry, la lady Efron. No, but you can absolutely yeah. call me Brooke. I would really. I love that for us. Okay, cool. Glad we've made it to that level. You are just so calm, cool, and collected. Yeah. I, How wow. are you doing this? I feel like I'm so <laughs> nervous to be talking on the phone right now. No, I, I'll be nervous too. It's okay. Well, you're Olivia, I'm thinking we need to bring you as a third host on this podcast. You just get it. I mean, guys, if you need me as a recurring segment, so be it. I think I do. All right. I, I'm curious to ask, because you, you, you mentioned specifically my dating life in New York City. How is dating in New York right now? Uh, besides brutal? Um, no, it's fine. I, I just think... I don't think I'm personally that great at it. Um, uh, just, like, just knowing you for five seconds, I'm sure you are just amazing. So, so for me, it's like I kind of will do anything for like the, the sake plot. Of it. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And like, I just don't know like how serious other people are taking dating apps. Like, I just say something and people respond like, "Wait, what?" And I'm like, "Oh, yeah, like, yeah." What was I supposed I think like it's what they're supposed to say. Right. Well, I, I'm a firm believer in like the right person that you're supposed to go on a date with is going to get it. Yeah. Because it's fun. Da yeah. Dating apps are funny. They set yeah. jokes up for you. Just like And whoever doesn't think dating apps are a joke and is taking them really seriously. Run. I, yeah. I don't think it, there's someone it's that we want to go, from yeah. that, from we wanna go on a no, date with. Fact. Yeah. That's, that's definitely true. Do you yeah. have any? Yeah. I just think. Oh, go ahead. Do you have any tips or anything? For, tips, tips of the for trade two, for dating yeah. in New York? Oh man, tips for dating in New York or dating in general, for example, LA um, or just like well, going I'll, on a maybe date. I'll give, maybe I'll give a piece of advice on what I maybe wouldn't do again. Okay. I would love um, that. 
so I actually went to like a improv open mic with someone on a second date Ooh. and like to do improv on a date is just so crazy. Oh, you had to get um, up there? Yes. Yeah, oh, over yeah. my dead body. So, yeah. Um, so I probably wouldn't do that again, but I just think like I'm really working on <sighs> being it. myself on dates instead of being like, let me make sure this goes well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't even know how to do that. I just feel like I kind of chameleon to like other like people, I guess. Like I can be like, oh, let me adapt to like make this person laugh. But instead I'm being like, no, I'm going to actually sit in silence and see how they react. Yeah. Which has kind of plummeted, but I think it'll hit eventually. It'll hit eventually. Yeah. I think I feel like we've been conditioned to be like afraid of silence. Like I personally, like if there's one moment of like dead air, I start to freak out and just like, yeah, word vomit, which is Mm -hmm. worse because I'm like, what am I saying? And those are the things that I'm going to be thinking about as I'm falling asleep. Like, why did I say that? So yeah, yeah, silence. Did I just overshare? Yeah. Yeah. Like anxiety like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to not do that shit. Embracing the silence. No, you absolutely no, can, yeah. and you can, and you should. And and shit, shit, shit. I'll just and, join you there. And yeah, shit, okay. yeah. And shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. well, I feel like you've changed my life, not yeah. to be dramatic. Not to be oh dramatic. A really good chat. I'm kind of being I mean, a little fired She's giving up. us advice. Like about to- That's, I think, what we should do. I think our advice is so not good no offense yeah, like, that we should be well, getting advice on, an advice oh, segment. i don't, I don't I, uh, advice segment but the listeners are giving us advice olivia you've just unlocked it babe i'm curious wait what yeah. do you do what do you do for work it sounds like you work let me guess go ahead i think i think you work at like maybe a startup no she Whoa. does not no she does not yeah. olivia's in yeah thank you thank you guys olivia's in are you like I some sort of communication PR communications right like there's writing maybe okay so in the ideal world so i moved to new york like without a job nice um and i want to pursue like writing and like tv writing like i'd love to like write a sitcom or something but we've both tried what we've am, tried what i currently am is a nanny oh nice oh, amazing there's been so much nanny talk on the show today oh really you, you got to tune in and listen because yeah no, I will. I'm a loyal listener. Oh, amazing. Oh, Olivia, thank you, Olivia. I, mean, I just can't love you more I if I tried. Seriously. Um, wow. Well, thank I you. I feel like I should reciprocate that. Like, I, oh, no, we're, no. We, I mean. I'll take it. I, you're actually, like, really gassing me up. I'll take it. Um, well, you, we're like, already official Patreon first caller. Yeah, thank you. 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 I yeah, think you've, well, I you've set a really high bar. You really well, have. I think the people writing in are going to be like kind of on the norm side. I could be wrong. I could be not On the norm wrong. side? Like normal? Yeah. Well, oh, I feel like be, you you are, are standing out as one of the yeah, most normal. Yeah, I mean, you'd be shocked. Yeah. There. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I need to like journal about this for a while. <laughs> I, of course you journal. She's perfect. <laughs> Um, wait, bro, you die at this. Yeah, tell Not, me. I had to break I had to break up with my therapist <gasps> because he legitimately made toast and ate it on our call. Oh my god. Like, like was thinking that feels incredibly that Holy feels shit. so I'm violating. I'm so sorry that you had to do that. And I'm sorry you were violated just, in that way. You're in you're in so much luck today because this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. I knew it was gonna be. Gonna be <laughs> and you can use our code. <laughs> you can use our code, <laughs> Olivia. That's amazing news. But all right, wow. Well, Olivia, I would recommend my therapist to you, other Brooke. But I think she's just LA based. So you could move to LA. We could become roommates. We could see the same therapist. We could write a sitcom together. We could go on dates together. We could date each other. <laughs> I just sounds, love you, Olivia. <laughs> sounds ideal, Brooke. Okay, cool. I love that. Well, Liv, thank you so much for your time. I'm can't I can't wait for this to Connor's come out. Connor's trying to get easy. off the call, but I'm I just never want to leave. I know, phone, right? I know. I'm not, Seriously, I'm not talking you off. I'm yeah. just. Oh, wait, uh, Connor, real quick, just yeah. so I can prove that I'm a fan of yours. Um, my I one time got a cameo from you for my friend. Oh no way! It was so funny. You really nailed it. Thank you so much. That King means the cameos. world. I need to turn that back on. Yeah, it's you're been good a while. At those. I that love has to be the easiest money. Well. I try to, I have some friends that do it, not naming any names, and it's just the same thing over and over. 
But I like pride myself on it being a bit yeah. every single time. You're really good at that. Yeah, so, it's like a little challenge. It's pretty funny. Yeah, so, but sometimes it just gets too much because mm-hmm. if I, you know, you have to do bits. I don't want to half-ass it. But I love Cameo. Yeah. I'm going to turn Cameo back on this week. Yeah, you should. It's funny. Well, um, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Well, Olivia, <laughs> thank well, you so much. Connor wants me off. The I know. It's crazy. No, Just, okay. it has nothing to well, do with we me. We love you. Love you. Thanks for being amazing. Okay. Bye. Love Bye. You guys too. Bye, um, Liv. Happy pod. DM Bye. me. DM, happy talks. DM me if you I, wouldn't I'll mind. DM. Okay. I will. I'll, I will. And I will respond. All right. All okay. right. Bye, Liv. I love you. Right. Bye. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Bye. Okay, that was just like best case scenario I, I for mean, someone to call. I I think it's pretty clear, but I do love her so much. Yeah, yeah. You made it abundantly clear. I she was in just a good a, way. A really sweet, sweet girl. Um, well, that was just delightful. Honestly. That was so fun. Yeah. Wow, and that's good exposure therapy for me talking on the phone. It is. Yeah. So I would like to do that again next week. If I that, would too. If that so works, if you guys fits in your schedule, if you guys want to chat, maybe give us some advice. Um. On literally on anything. anything. I don't think there's anything that I don't need advice I on. I kind of need some money advice right now. So if anyone's like, does any financial type situ- career thing, what am I talking about? I would love to chat through that. Maybe some good investment talk or something. And maybe some advice about just like feeling productive on a day-to-day basis. Oh, yeah. I want that too. And love advice and dating advice. And living like just I like healthy to, lifestyle advice. I need to put my fitted sheet on my bed. How to put a fitted sheet on in the least painful way. <sighs> Duvet cover while you're at it too. But I mean. Literally anything under the sun we will accept. Write us in. Advice. Again, the, the email. I think I think we should. Let's wrap up while we're ahead. I'm, okay. I'm still riding this high of talking to Olivia on okay, the phone. Okay, yeah. But um, please guys, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show on all platforms. We have a huge guest next week. One of our absolute loves of our lives, both of us, Kelsey Kreppel. <laughs> Kelsey Kreppel is going to be on next week. We're I'm so, so excited. stoked. If you have any questions for us or Kelsey, uh, you can write into our email at dearbandc at gmail.com. That's D E A R B A N D C at gmail.com. Shoot us your number. Like, I don't know. Like, this is such an exciting development this week. It really week. is. And then Kelsey's going to be so fun to talk to. She's going to really, be the best. She really always close is. With her, so. We will see you next week. All right. See you then. Smooches. Love you.